Hello, this is a Schiedemeyer Grand Piano, six foot three inches long, 190 centimeters. And I think it's made in 1880. A little bit of confusion over the serial numbers, as we'll look at in a minute. But this lyre style is certainly in the 1880s is very common. And later, there's another serial number that suggests it's 1905. Not likely to be with that lyre style, but there are certain features on here that are younger, I think. The music desk being one of them, I'm um, not convinced this is an original sheet uh, music desk. They're, uh, they tend to, they're quite thin normally and they tend to uh, break. They're quite complicated and fancy, but this looks more like a later one. And um, this style here is used by Richard Litt, which is also a Stuttgart firm. Um, if you've got any comments in the trade, love to try and be sure about this because I'm not, not at all sure. I've looked at it for a long time and I think looking at the reaction style is probably 1880s, so let's say it is. Um, that somebody stuck their uh, dealer's name on top of the, uh, the logo here, which is some new, I think that says Pianoforte Fabric underneath. Um, that's not something you see very often. And if it's repolished, obviously that can be taken off. I might recommend that, really. And looking at the casework, is generally in extremely good condition um, on most of it, but the top isn't. So let's just have a look around. So this is a good French polish, good sheen. Um, we would tend to polish it very slightly lighter to bring out more contrast in the grain if we're going to repolish the piano. The legs are good and integral. Um, so the sides, and I think the long side, see, have a look, it might be difficult to get to. Um, maybe slightly faded here. There's, a, there's um, a window there, so that's faded a bit. And it's a bit dark around here, sorry about that. So I think that side is pretty good. The top lid here is the main thing that is uh, needing repolishing. So look here. Now the problem is if you repolish this, um, strip it back, repolish it, it uh, does look very different colour from the rest of it. And it's really difficult to match the colour. We could try and uh, improve that. Obviously, that's that's certainly a possibility. So without repolishing the piano, so there's an alternative there. Trying to improve this, I think it will improve a lot actually um, with uh, uh, j just rubbing it down and then polishing over the top. Uh, the as I say, the case does look generally very pleasing indeed. Um, so the, the contrasting grain here, slightly lighter colour will bring out more of a contrast is what we would do. And uh, this is very similar to Steinway's in design, similar to Richard Lip as well. All three makes of this age are, are quite similar. This desk, by the way, folds forward like a Steinway one does. It doesn't have a prop stick at the back, um, so it's relying on uh, resting here. Uh, it's uh, quite dangerous in a sense that you could easily put pull the hinges as, as so often does happen with when they fold this way, you have to remember that. The most grand pianos fold the other way. And let's look at the top lid. So that's obviously the same colour. Let's see if there's any fade line as you'd expect there to be. And um, this is more original, isn't it? And then there, there is a fade line and, and dirty here. So um, if we're going to try and improve this, I, I, I would love to see this French polished again. And um, it's a little bit on the shiny side too, too a bit reflective, but uh, we can't criticise the side, that looks really good, except it could have better grain contrast. Now it's been restrung, I've thought long and hard about when, and there's a date of 1925 written inside the piano. That will be commensurate with the colour of the strings, I think. If you see a new piano, new Steinway uprights, for instance, we've got one in from 1925-ish, and that looks similar colour. So you're telling by the brass colour here, um, and the style as well. Uh, the tuning pins are larger than they were originally, so it's clearly been restrung. I don't think the rest plank's been changed, but the, spray, the, the frame's been sprayed be very beautifully, um, and it's very integral throughout. So there's a, a choice here to make. The restringing's been done well, as we'll listen to in a minute. Um, and there's not really moth in the felt here. There's a little bit of moth underneath the keys, but it doesn't seem to have damaged them too much. Um, uh, the soundboard has been shimmed and has opened up slightly since the shims. You can see the lighter shim here underneath the piano. You can see it clearly. Um, so it's been properly restored by someone who knew what they were doing. And I'm guessing, well, this looks light, perhaps a bit too light for 1925. Uh, it's, it's interesting because although I spent a long time going through this, I still haven't been sure about when it was restored and various factors. And here's one serial number there. That, that would date it. Uh, Sheedmare dates are difficult as well because there's J and P and there's Sheedmare and Sun. And it's not always clear from there. It doesn't say anything except Sheedmare. Um, and I'm not sure. If you're in the trade again, please help out. Though so that's 
would say 1905, but on the soundboard and on the action, we have this date, this number here, 11163, which is 1880. So I think with the lyre being looking like an 1880s piano, that's probably correct. I don't really understand why that number's on the piano as well. Now, tuning pins are reasonably tight, uh, which is good news. So they don't, they're not as tight as they would be new, but restringing wouldn't be something you'd have to do. Um, maybe you consider doing it if you're doing lots of other work on the pianos. We'll see, we need to do the hammers. As we listen to the tone, it sings so beautifully. So all three makes I've mentioned there, Steinway, Richard Lip and Schiedmer competing to be the best pianos. And so such warmth, so beautifully restrung. And we wouldn't improve that tone restringing it. I'm pretty certain we wouldn't improve it. It'd be hard to get it as good as. That's hammers that are making it sound bad. The break point isn't good, but I think that could be matched in better. So that sounds a bit brash compared to that, but it's a lot to do with hammers and perhaps a little bit of voicing. And lots of variety in the hammers, as we'll see when we look at them in a minute. The felts underneath the keys do show some signs of uh, moths having attacked them. There's some little round moth droppings and green ones. You probably can't see very well on the videos, but they are there, but there's no extensive damage. Now looking at the hammers, there's extensive wear since it was reconditioned, as you can see, since it was restored. And you can see how flat that is. That means that the sound is very dull because too much hammer sitting the string. And also the hammer might be soft itself. So that definitely would be improved with new hammers. And, and the shanks, are sli uh, there's a looseness here. So if we look at that, you can see them moving sideways a little bit. Um, so that's making a noise as well. Um, so no doubt about what we would do with this one, which is change hammers, shanks and rollers, as we mentioned many times before. This uh, roller here, this knuckle, it needs changing. And then that needs lubricating with dry lubricant afterwards to keep it nice and smooth. Well, I've mentioned these things before. There's, there's one hammer here that's uh, hammer head loose. You can hear that, that's an F. Um, and you can hear the difference where that one's loose and the, this one isn't uh, moving around. So that's just a simple job. But obviously we're changing them. We're, put a new one on anyway. Somebody's broken the top shank, that's quite normal. Uh, that this, When you lift the action out, that's too high up and the shank breaks. Uh, so common and in the trade. I've, I've done that before a few times, unfortunately. Uh, it's easy. So you, you don't want to put your finger on the key when you're lifting the action out, otherwise that's what can happen. And Even if you're not putting finger on the key, sometimes the hammer's a bit high. Well, I think I've said enough. Uh, just to say that this, this action is similar to Steinway action, but one identification of being old as well is the fact that the stays are wooden here, um, which is the same with Beckstein, and that's another indicator that it's probably 1880, and the number of that was said before is stamped on the action itself. So I was going to say it's 1880, and no idea why it's got the younger number on the frame. Forgot to mention that the keys are ivory and in good condition. Not sure if these are original either. Um, the, there's some chips there that they're in extremely good condition apart from those chips we can certainly disguise the chips and that's probably the best thing to do rather than try and replace and nowadays ivories are often replaced because it's difficult to uh, no, you need an ivory certificate with all all pianos that you sell um, so quite constantly and if they if the piano is exported also that can be difficult with ivory keys but um if that's, that's obviously not going to be the case here but just mentioning it and uh, they're in good condition 85 keys by the way looking at the worksheet summary um there's the confusion with the serial numbers so the top one would date at 1905 and the bottom one 1880 we're going for 1880 because of the style of the lyre and various other factors and it looks like an 1880s one, 85 keys too, um, which is a, usually kind of older pianos. Um, Repolish is a possibility and if you enter to the top I think we could probably make good without repolishing or we could repolish the whole piano and that will be st a stunning piano really to repolish. So very enthusiastic about, about Schiedmer of, of this age. Um, so I'm not sure when it was restored. On the action, it's as a date of 1925, so I'm just guessing that. Um, and has the music desk been replaced? 
if you're in the trade, please do help if you can. So there's some summary of wells. There's lots of other work to do, but the main work is replacing hammer shanks and rollers, regulate and rewear and treat for moth, pitch raising, obviously from A435 to 440. Um, and I haven't bothered to weigh the keys because if we're changing the hammers anyway, they're very light, 44, very uneven, obviously. I've just weighed out this one. And 20 up weight, so that would be more like 50 and 25 we'll end up at. And uh, that will be... Of course, if you want a lighter action and you're used to a lighter action, we can leave it at about 47 or so and across and then perhaps a bit heavier in the bass. So thank you for listening. Um, I hope that's been helpful. I'm just going to play the piano to get some idea of the sound. I noticed I hadn't measured the leg room and the pedal height, uh, and it's extraordinary. So I thought I'd just show you that. 64 centimetres is 61 would be normal. 64 is great leg room and 3.5 is low um, pedals, so that means you could put caster cups under as well. So there's plenty of legroom for tall people. The piano already does have caster cups, are probably about an inch above, and with the pedals three and a half, that would lower them to two and a half, which is still acceptable as long as they're not, as long as you can use them. Um, some people don't like very low pedals, but plenty of legroom on this piano. Sorry, I haven't got my microphone stand here, and um, so it's on the edge of the keyboard here. But um, I just want to give you an idea of the tone. And typically warm bass, which again suggests it's 1880, have a warmer bass really. Now here is very undefined because of the hammers. You can hear the underlying tone, of course, is good. Very often you, people are playing pianos where uh, the hammers are very worn like this and because the tone is so nice anyway, they don't think about changing them. Very uneven. So that's quite bright, that one. Very resonant piano. And very difficult to control when the hammers are so so worn really, there's so much hammer um, hitting the string that you don't get a very defined sound. So I hope that's been helpful. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>